Back to the Araneta Coliseum and at the half, the San Miguel Beermen lead 42-32 against the Barangay Ginebra Gin Kings. Welcome back to the PBA here at the Araneta Coliseum. I'm Dominic Uy. And you know what? The PBA has had a banner season so far. And let's do a little recap on what have the, been the events here for the PBA. Let's start it out with the annual rookie draft that happened in August. And let's see the best of the 2008 for the PBA. That's the rookie draft. And number one pick overall, that's Gabe Norwood. He went to Rain or Shine, Elastic Painters. And number two became Jared Dillinger, who went to the Talkin Text Bone Pals. And Commissioner Sonny Barrios names Yang Giao as the new RP team head coach. And moving on, October 2, the opening ceremonies of the PBA season, the 2008-2009. And you, you can see all our players, fans, and muses are very happy to be back in the PBA here at the Araneta Coliseum. And in the opening game, the Talking Text Dropbang Texters took on the Coca-Cola Tigers. And that was an exciting ball game as Yancy Del Campo hit that exciting trick and the Santa Lucia Realtors getting their first ever championship, all Filipino championship ring. And the Alaska Aces now off to a 4-0 hot start. Compliments of these guys on your screens. They have been playing well. On the other hand, the Coca-Cola Tigers were on a slump. And that forced management to name Kenneth Duremdes as the new Tigers head coach to shake things up in the Coca-Cola Tigers camp. And on October 31, we had a great game. The TJ Giants win in overtime with that big, big game of Kirby Raimundo. Uh, what a way of celebrating Halloween, these two guys, Kirby Raimundo and James Shot. What a great contribution. And as usual, the PBA likes to play out of the country. The PBA goes to Singapore. San Miguel playing the Talking Text Tropang Texters. The tro Talking Text Tropang Texters winning that ball game. And rain or shine surprising everyone. They have been playing so well. Rain or shine for the first time will be allowed to enter the playoffs. A historical moment for their franchise and looking to get even more and go even higher. And then the biggest trade so far in the season, Rani Del Del Campo and Don Aliado switching teams here in mid-season. The Alaska Aces playing and leading the entire time in the eliminations in the ending and entering so the semifinals. The automatic spots already picked up here by Tim Cohn and the rest of the Alaska Aces. Talking takes that by one, going for the win, two seconds to go. Castro, the rookie, will start the play here, two seconds, he'll look for the game winner. Got it there, for the win! Yes, sir! And that was in his second game for the Talking Text Tropang Texters. Rani Del Del Campo hitting this game winner. Merry Christmas. Rani Del Del Campo, Talking Text Tropang Texters, and to the Air 21 Express. Rani Del Del Campo hitting that big, big shot and uh, leading the Talking Text Tropang Texters into the semifinals. And the Barangay Hinebra Gin Kings entering the quarterfinals. Compliments of a double-double by Eric Mink. They ended up in third place. And that's what happened so far here in the PBA. It's just been half of the season. Proves to be more exciting. And you know what? This first game also between the Barangay Hinebra Gin Kings and the San Miguel Beermen has been very exciting. To break it down for you even more, here's Jude and Kenito. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dominic. And uh, let's take a look at the halftime stats right away, Kenito, as uh, we're about to start the second half here for the quarterfinal matchup. Well, Jude, the big numbers are in the field goal percentage because uh, Barangay Nebra not really able to get its strike going. 28% shooting only as against 50% for San Miguel Beer. And in three-point percentages, wow, 12% shooting by uh, Barangay Nebra. And they certainly need to get their outside shot to fall inside. J.J. Helterbrand, Juti Valenzuela, and Sandy Salvation are a combined 0 out of 13 from 3-point distance. On well, that time, Eric Menk was blocked by Dorian Peña, Hontiveros. I think he's still scoreless and remains that way as a loose ball foul will be called. On the University of Cebu, hot shot, Dondon Hontiveros. Uh, not a good game for Dondon, at least in the first half. 
But San Miguel Beer happens to lead the league in field goal percentages allowed. Opponents averaging only 38% shooting against San Miguel. And San Miguel, uh, in our Dean's List, perimeter coverage, that's a check mark. But limiting turnovers, that's an X. And igniting the bonfire, Bumba to Sojo, really has to be able to hit his strike. Well, Chris Pacana, maybe that's a good sign for Coach Joseph Luchico. He did hit a outside jumper, a three-pointer, something they desperately needed. Peña inside, double team. they will be fouled off the help defense from Pacana. You know, it's interesting that in that Dean's list for San Miguel, they had only one check mark out of three, while Ginebra, as we're seeing now in their theme, control the tempo, they've got two check marks against one. They're challenging the defense because they've gone to the line more. They're very aggressive to the rim. They're preventing the easy execution, and San Miguel has had to falter or has had to uh, play with only three assists against Ginebra 7. That's a check mark as well. But keeping the offense guessing, that's not a good sign because Hinebra's field goal percentage has been down and San Miguel is hitting 50% from the floor. So the big difference really has been in the field goal percentages. So even if Hinebra is two check marks against only one X, that X is a big, big X. Well, you, the bottom line is, I think, you still got to put the ball in the basket. And that's what Hinebra has uh, failed to do so far. Here's Artadi, drives all the way inside. His floater is right through. By the way, in the last play, it was Eric Meck was called for the foul, and that was, I think, his uh, third personal foul, so they had to take him out. Alex Casano now in the ball game to guard Dorian Peña. Here's Hontiveros, gets a screen from Peña. Hontiveros, 16-footer, that's short. And here's Barangay Ginebra, only down by six. Here's Halterbrand for three. Still continues to miss as Wilson will be called for the loose ball foul. Helton ran out zero out of six. A couple of, of those three pointers for Bara and Ginebra and the Kings are going to be in this uh, ball game immediately. Well, if you're a shooter, I think you just got to keep on shooting until okay. uh, you get your groove. And the problem is if San Miguel shooters continue to hit the shots, then it's going to be a big problem here for Ginebra because they'll have to play catch up all the way. Well, Artadi blocked a jump shot from Olsen Vasella. As Barangay Hinebra tries again here in this possession. He bounces it inside to Crisano. Crisano against Peña. Drives inside, but he lifted his pivot foot. The fundamental error there of the footwork of Alex Crisano. Now, when you've got a situation when your big shooters like Sunday Salvation, Junti Valenzuela, and J.J. Helderman unable to get the shot to fall inside. They've got to be more aggressive going to the rim. They have to get their confidence back. And maybe if they can get some shots from the free throw line, that stroke will come back. That's an offensive foul. Another foul off the ball. Like I said, That's it seems every other foul has been off the ball, not on the ball. As Lordi Tugadi, he just shoved Paul Artadi out of the way. It's also very clear that both teams put a premium on execution and that's why you see a lot of players setting picks they want to be able to free up teammates and I think also it's a tribute to the way both teams are playing defense it's hard to shake off the defenders here's Pacana losing control and that's going to be a turnover for Barangay Ginebra you know that free guard uh, offense or alignment of uh, Barangay Ginebra really hasn't clicked well, the guy who has clicked in the sideline is Dominic Uy. Let's go to courtside. <laughs> Thank you, Jude. For the Barangay Hinebra Jin Kings, Coach Rongi Chico reminded them of three things. Guys, remember, no good looks for the shooters of San Miguel. And you got to play hard and play physical if you want to win this game. Jude? Well, playing hard and playing physical doesn't seem to be a problem for either team when it's a San Miguel versus Hinebra. Here's Dorian Peña missing the layup. Loose ball foul. And that's going to be on Crisano, it looks like, the way he's been reacting. It's Pacana called for the foul. You see the attempted execution on the pick and roll with Bonbon Custodio drawing the defense towards him because he's such a great creator. But uh, Dorian Fenya just not up to the task. Here's Washington, picks up his dribble out to Rasella. Eight on the shot clock. Olsen Rasella gets a screen. Crisano picks him up. And a foul is called. So a lot of fouls here now. 
in the first few minutes of the third quarter. And that's what you don't want to happen if you're Hinebra. Shot clock winding down, it was just about six or seven seconds left in the shot clock. They gave up the foul, and San Miguel had no chance orchestrating a good play in that sequence. Well, with that foul, Cusano sits down. Billy Mamarel, who had a very good first half, enters the game. Montiveros tries to elude Helter Brand. They rotate it to Custodio. Custodio drives left inside, floats in the air, 